Sherry Blair joins us now. She's been supporting women during the current crisis, specifically focusing on female businesswomen, entrepreneurs who are struggling in the pandemic. And, uh, and she joins us now. It's so good to see you. And this is... Great. Gosh, Sherry, if we ever needed this, it's right now because businesses are struggling and will continue to struggle for quite some time. Absolutely, Lorraine. Um, my foundation has been working for 11 years now with women in small and medium-sized enterprises in low- and middle-income countries where they have all the issues that all the entrepreneurs have at the moment, coupled, of course, with much less support in the form of state support, in the form of uh, a society that recognizes the contribution that women can make. Uh, and, you know, struggle often to be taken seriously as women entrepreneurs. And one of the extraordinary things about the progress that women has made over the, well, the last century, at least, is that uh, when we look at all the statistics, this year, the uh, World Economic Forum's report showed that in relation to women's economic opportunities, in relation to women being taken seriously and having equal chances to create their own businesses, things have actually got worse, not better. And it's now going to be 257 years before men and women get equal chances to build their own businesses. So couple that with the virus and the effect that's having on the economy. And obviously, uh, the women that we work with are being impacted uh, very strongly. What's really encouraging, though, is all the mentoring that's going on. You know, women like yourself that have got an awful lot of experience can, of course, pass that on. And all all the, the um, information and all the good work that's being do, done online, because this is the way ahead, isn't it? This is the way forward. I mean, this is the way Absolutely. we're all communicating now. Absolutely. And funny enough, you know, when I was in Downing Street, I was able to continue my business as a lawyer and still do the things that you're expected to do because I use technology. And that's why when I set up the foundation in 2008, I thought, well, can we use that technology to support women entrepreneurs in countries that maybe don't have so much access and so for the last 11 years we have been building our programs using technology so you mentioned mentoring we have mentored over 3,000 women in that time with one-to-one -one mentors men and women across the world who for a year will give two hours a month to support a woman entrepreneur one of our women entrepreneurs said it's my invisible friend who works walks with me on my journey and that of course because it's on the internet uh, is still going on and yeah. we are literally about to match another 400 pairs, that is 400 mentors and mentees who will start their entrepreneurship mentoring this month because we are able to continue that service because of course it's on the web exactly. and we would love if any of your uh, viewers are interested, we are still looking for mentors to support these women. Uh, the next tranche will not be until November, but we train people in the art of listening, in the art of mentoring, how to use our technology. So we already have been doing a lot with technology. We have an app on, on the mobile phone like this, which is called the Her Venture app. And that provides uh, bite-sized pieces, five minute little classes in basic entrepreneurial skills, you know, how to run your business, how to work out profit and loss. Uh, an opportunity to talk with other women in, in, in the same position. We're doing that at the moment in Nigeria. The US uh, aid department is giving us money to expand, expand our work in Vietnam and Indonesia. And these things, of course, can continue because they don't require face-to-face -face contact. Exactly, and I think that's the way, that, I think that's definitely the way ahead. Now, look, how are you doing in lockdown and who are you with and how's it going? We're, we're, we're at home. Um, we have actually with us my youngest son, Leo, who will be 20 in, in May. And uh, uh, he's, a, he's a student so, uh, working from home at the moment. Uh, and we also have my second son, Nicholas, his wife, and our two grandchildren, Theo and Iris, because we, uh, they already came to us, uh, come to us two days a week anyway. So we decided the best thing to do was to consolidate so we all came together before uh, the lockdown. And so we've been living um, together, which has been great fun seeing that, my grandchildren. 
Oh, that weekend. is great when you've got a bit of family around you. I mean, because so many people are kind of in splendid isolation, which is not so good. Now, look, I have to say congratulations to you because you're going to be a grandmother again. Catherine is expecting, which is great. But at the same time, it's a difficult time, isn't it? I mean, you just want it to is. be with her and that's that's going to be really hard. Because obviously she is not with us, neither is my elder son Ewan with him. He's just got, he's had a six-month-old baby. So we... I'm used to seeing them. And Catherine, of course, like many women now, is facing giving birth in a few months. Uh, and I had hoped to be with her. And I still hope I might be able to. But the, the hospital is saying it's very unlikely and that she, uh, you know, her husband will be able to be there, but he will have to leave pretty quickly after the birth. It's her first baby, so that's a, a worry for me, uh, especially, you know, your daughter's first child is a, is a big thing, I think, for any woman. No, oh, absolutely. It's, and I mean, I know you're a woman who likes to be busy. You're obviously doing all the work for the foundation, which you can do, as you've said, online, which is amazing. And it, th that's the thing that's so good if you're staying at home is you've got an aim. You know, you've got you've got something to do. Um, and I know that, you know, you are the kind of couple that just want to keep doing stuff. Does, does Tony ever think, I wish I was still in the thick of it or, is, or not so much? <laughs> Well, you've probably seen that he is very much in the thick of it. His, his institute has pivoted particularly to focus on Africa and to help him get much needed personal protection equipment to Africa. I mean, bear in mind that so many countries in Africa don't have the sort of national health service that we have. And so it's about quite basic equipment that they, they really need. Um, you know that his institute has been putting out many papers about a way through this virus and how we deal with gradually um, bringing, uh, going back to normal. So, I mean, I can assure you that uh, he is very, very busy and very focused on doing all he can to help, not just in Africa, but also any support he can give our government here which is what we need. We need all minds. It doesn't, you know, this is, this is so much bigger than party politics, isn't it, Sherry? It's, it's all about everybody coming together and people who have got knowledge and experience to be able to share that. And it, and it doesn't matter, you know, forget the past, forget all the petty rivalries, how petty they seem now. It's about coming together, isn't it? Absolutely, for the, for, for the health and also for our, for our economy. And going back to, to our woman, this is one of the things they are, they're asking us now, you know, how do we get through this? You know, how do we find ways to adapt our business? I mean, these are the questions I know that businesses here are also asking. How do we support our employees? Uh, one of the women that we work with was in touch with me just yes, yesterday. She uh, does this amazing embroidery in India, Parsi. It's a particular craft which is dying out, and she supports a lot of the artisans there. Of course, at the moment, she can't uh, do that, but she is still paying her workers in order to make sure that they're able to survive. And I think, uh, you know, in a, when you don't have government support and, and however we feel, whether it's adequate or not, we do have some government support and that's really important. But in many of these countries, there is no government support. And so it's up to individuals and their families and businesses to work out a way of how to preserve uh, those businesses. So there is still an economy uh, uh, to go back to, well, if exactly, you like. Exactly, and it's like, you know, like I said, it's, a, it's, it's about coming together and all of that. Now, look, I cannot believe that your son, Leo, is nearly 20 years old. He's going to be 20 soon. That, that's just crazy. And, of course, um, he was born, well, you were in number 10, and, as we know, there's another little baby going to be due anytime soon. Any advice for Carrie, for Boris Johnson's partner, anything that, you know, that you went through that you think would help her? Well, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's like where she's, I mean, she's, she was much younger than I was. I was 45. She's, I think, early 30s. Uh, it's her first baby. Leo is my fourth. Um, I think for everyone, being pregnant at this time with the constraints that will be on, um, you know, how people can support you, it's, it's a difficult issue, but I'm sure she will absolutely get the best care. And uh, doing it in the public eye is an, is an additional strain. I wish her all the best. Oh, that's lovely. Sherry, thank you so much for joining us this morning. More power to you and to your foundation. And of course, I um, hope everything is, is all right with Catherine's baby. And I, I hope that you can be there and get to cuddle your grandchild. Thank oh, you so I much. Feel, I, I absolutely hope so too. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. <laughs>